holes. Anywhere between 300 and 500,000 Polish prisoners of war were captured and deported to the Soviet Union. This included a number of educated and members of the Polish cultural elite who served as officers in the Polish Reserve Army. Many people ended up in prison camps run by the NKVD, Stalin's infamous secret police force. The goal of the NKVD was to identify which of the prisoners were willing and capable of being integrated into the Soviet Union. Those who were deemed incapable of assimilation were listed as enemies to the Soviet Union. Many of these people were high-ranking members of the military, including admirals and generals, members of Polish royalty and university professors. On the 5th of March 1940, Stalin and his leading members of his Politburo signed a memo to the head of the NKVD, Lavrenshi Beria, ordering the execution of over 25,000 Polish prisoners deemed to be the biggest threats. These people were the key players in Polish culture and leadership, and in targeting these people, Stalin attempted to destroy Polish resistance to Soviet assimilation. Anti-Polish actions were standard fare for Beria and his NKVD. From 1937 to 1938, around 111,000 Polish people living in the Soviet Union were executed by the NKVD, under the cover of purging those deemed to be conducting espionage. In April of 1940, the execution started. In all, 21,857 people were executed. Of those people, around 14,000 were prisoners of war of all ranks, from generals to privates. The remaining 7,000 were made up of journalists, doctors, lawyers and other members of the Polish cultural elite. The usual method of execution would involve a prisoner first being made to sign and confirm their identity. They would be taken to a room with a hose and a drain in the middle. The prisoner would be shot in the back of the head with a single bullet. The body was removed, the room was washed down and the next prisoner would be brought in. Such executions would take place every three minutes throughout the night over the course of 28 days. It is even reported that Vasily Bolkin, a favoured NKVD executioner, was personally responsible for around 7,000 executions in this manner. His weapon of choice was a Volta Model 2 pistol, as these had less recoil and so meant less strain on his wrist. Such pistols were received following the non-aggression pact, but would also provide a level of plausible deniability as German-made bullets would be found in the corpses. Many of the bodies were buried in mass graves in the Katyn forest, with the Soviets hoping that this would be the end of the matter. After all, it was but a small drop in the ocean of blood spilled by the NKVD. But matters would change. On the 22nd of June 1941, Nazi Germany invaded the Soviet Union. As the Red Army was pushed back and more and more territory was taken by the German armed forces, it raised issues for the Soviets in respect of the bodies buried in Katyn. The Polish government in exile, headed by General Władysław Sikorski, was now allied with the Soviet Union and in the fight against Nazi Germany. Questions were raised as to those Polish soldiers still imprisoned in the Russian camps. Thousands were released to form new battalions, vital to fight in the Eastern Front. But the question was raised as to the whereabouts of the thousands of missing officers which represented 50% of the army leadership. When General Sikorsky met Stalin in person, he was assured that the missing men had likely fled to Manchuria following their release and that their whereabouts could not be confirmed due to the massive scale of the Soviet Union. This stalling tactic would be put to the test when in the early months of 1943, rumours abounded of mass graves in the Katyn forest. Upon receiving reports of the mass graves, Josef Goebbels, the Nazi propaganda minister, was eager to exploit the massacre. The Red Cross and German medical officers, along with captured British medical officers, oversaw the exhumation of thousands of bodies. A commission was established with representatives from many countries. It became very clear that the victims, still dressed in their winter clothes with their identification documents to hand, were murdered at the time when the area was held by the Soviets.